In today's video, I decide to work during a tube strike in London. But be sure to be stay tuned to the very end because just because the tubes are down doesn't mean it's always plain sailing in the taxi. Now, whilst I'm expecting it to be busy, I can't take anything for granted, i.e. there might be a lot of traffic for me to get into an area to actually pick someone up. I decide to try Paddington Station. There is a queue of cabs there, but it does seem to be turning over. And in about 10 minutes or so, I managed to get this couple who want to go to the Park Plaza Westminster. Not to be confused with the Park Plaza County Hall just across the road. It's always really tough starting off with a long job like this because I've not been in town yet. I don't know where the traffic might be. We can see just how much traffic this tube strike has generated and even the bus lane can't help me out in this situation. I go down Edgware Road and it's a real breath of fresh air to see the police pulling over a cyclist for jumping a red light. But I feel like it would have been more worthwhile pulling over this idiot who's going on an electric one wheel scooter into oncoming traffic. Now this is actually the second day of two tube strikes in London and it affects the entire tube network. On this run to the Park Plaza Westminster, I have a bit of a time to think about how I'm going to navigate my way there. Effectively, I've got to get to Buckingham Palace and then pick from several options there. The first could be Birdcage Walk, but a couple of days ago, Birdcage Walk was incredibly heavy traffic. I head down the Mall, and from there, I can spy out whether I want to use Admiralty Arch or head down Horse Guards Road. Now, as I pull up to the Institute of Contemporary Arts, you will see that there is quite a lot of traffic trying to get through that arch. And I know that generally, when the traffic backs up to this point, it will take about 15 minutes to get through that. So I take the right into Horse Guards Road. <sighs> it's one of those routes where I'm just gonna get stuck in traffic irregardless. There's no real way to avoid this. And it took me around 15 minutes to get through these lights. The worst I've ever seen it. We eventually managed to get our left into Great George Street. We bump into the political correspondent, Andrew Marr. And once we're through into Parliament Square, life's looking up for us a little bit. We head straight over Westminster Bridge, get a left into that little taxi and bus slip road, and we can neatly access the forecourt for the Park Plaza Westminster. That was bad. That was very, very bad. If you're new to my taxi driving videos, you might be unaware of the fact that we cab drivers hate traffic. If my wheels aren't turning, then I'm not earning. And luckily, I don't have to go far before I pick up this gent on York Road who wants to go to St Pancras International. We just buzz it along York Road, we can ply by the IMAX roundabout, go over Waterloo Bridge and into the Strand underpass. Unfortunately for us, there is more traffic unlike I've ever seen before. We just have to sit in this because it's the best way of getting to St Pancras Station. We sit in Southampton Row, trudge along past Russell Square before getting Woburn Place where we can exit off right into Coram Street. Once we're into Coram Street and we're doing that wiggle around the Brunswick Centre, you can see it's pretty clear. This is exactly what we need to be able to get our passenger to St Pancras as quick as possible. We get a left into Lee Street, bringing us out onto Marchmont Street. But once we get through Cartwright Gardens, the traffic then resumes again. I've never seen it this bad here either. You can just see the other traffic that are trying to cut through here and the passenger makes the right decision to bail at this point. No dramas, he leaves me a nice tip and just says, look, I wanna get to my train. But as you see when he's walking off, the guy is recovering from a broken leg. By this point, I'm feeling a bit hungry, but with the traffic in the area, I'm really concerned that I can't actually physically drive anywhere to get lunch. Not a problem. I've brought the sponsor of today's video, Y Food. Y Food is a complete meal replacement shake. Perfect blend of protein and carbohydrates and some 26 vitamins and minerals. They taste like your favorite milkshake and they come in a huge range of flavors as well as vegan options. The one I'm rocking at the moment is the lemon cheesecake flavor. I've generally always gone through the cold brew coffee because not only is it a super tasty meal, it's also got 100 milligrams of caffeine, so perfect for a lunchtime boost. But the lemon cheesecake flavor has that real creaminess and sweetness from the milkshake, 
but the zestiness of the lemon. It's gonna be a new contender for me. It's a limited edition flavor. Do check that out on YFood. And best of all, YFood are giving you guys a full 10% off your entire order by using my code TAXI10 or just use the link down in the description. So feeling refueled and ready to smash the rest of my shift, I try and head back in whilst avoiding the most amount of traffic possible. Now that I'm over in this east part, I'm thinking I wanna try the city of London. So head down St. John Street, and before I can even get to the meat market, I have this hand go up. This gentleman wants to go to Gibson Square. Now, if you're a taxi driver, if you're on the knowledge, Gibson Square is one of those points you will never ever be able to forget because it is the end of the very first run that we learn as knowledge students. Now run number one, page number one is Manor House Station to Gibson Square. Manor House is the starting point, Gibson Square is the finishing point. Not that anybody has ever wanted to go from Manor House to Gibson Square, but you have to know how to. It's a super simple run and we can't really deviate from it because there really is only one way to run it straight up St. John Street, sit in the utility works here on St. John Street, forward into Islington High Street, bear left into Liverpool Road, and then we get a right into Gibson Square. The gentleman in the back informs me that he's at the top of Gibson Square, and we can neatly sit him just there. I'm getting a little bit anxious because we're just getting into that rush hour period, and we can see this by the sheer amount of bicycles that are meandering around. I'm heading along Fearbolds Road and I get this lady on the opposite side of the street. It's quite difficult to get over there because of the amount of traffic and managing all these cycles going past, but we managed to get over there. The lady wants to go to Shrubland Road, Hackney. I initially take a little while to pull it and she tells me that it's just off of Queen's Bridge Road. As you go over the bridge northbound that crosses the canal, Shrubland Road is a couple of turns on the right hand side. So I know we've just got to start heading out east. I opt to go up Rosebury Avenue and of course I'm greeted with traffic. We eventually pull it back round onto Farringdon Road, we get ourselves over Ray Street, wiggle around near Clerkenwell Green and pull ourselves back onto Clerkenwell Road. From here we go into Old Street, I can navigate along this bus lane and to get the appropriate set over into Queensbridge Road, I want to go north of the Old Street roundabout. It'd be quite slow getting through Old Street roundabout and Hackney. So to do that, I get a left into Bath Street. From here we get a right into Peerless Street, which goes around the back of Moorfields Eye Hospital. Now I always find this road name very ironic because it's Peerless Street, as in to see less. Bearing in mind it's round the back of an eye hospital. I don't know where the original naming of that comes from. If someone knows, please let me know in the comments down below. From here, we get ourselves over onto City Road, Provost Street, Vestry Street, get ourselves a right into Bevenden Street, wiggle around over into Pitfield Street, right Crondall Street, which sets us up neatly for Hoxton Street. Now, ideally, I would want to use Falkirk Street, but taking the right and committing for it, I can't get through. They've decided to close the road. So therefore, I have to take this emergency diversion down Stanway Street. I'll be completely honest, I've never used this road before, but there is a lot of traffic coming from the opposite direction who are picking up the Falkirk Street closure from their direction. So I have to concede a little bit here, bite my tongue and just wait. We eventually get ourselves out onto Kingsland Road, get ourselves into Laburnum Street, which sets us up neatly for Queensbridge Road. I'm very thankful to be setting this passenger. It's been a complete stress and a headache just to navigate this part of Hackney. Really don't like driving around here because it always seems that roads have closed, severely changed, and just generally every driver is trying to out cheat and outsmart each other in this area. Navigating our way back into the city, I take note of as many of these closures as possible, but I have to get all the way back to Shoreditch High Street before I pick up my next job. This young lad just wants to go down near Aldgate. He actually lets me know that his father is a cabbie as well. We have a good old chat on the way. And luckily, Commercial Street isn't busy on the way down, so I'm able to drop him relatively easy. Taking the right turn, which is only allowed for buses and taxis, I head my way back into the city even further. And just by Aldgate Station, I pick up this gentleman who wants to go over to Covent Garden, specifically, Shelton Street. Now it's certainly a bit of a schlep, but it's beautiful because it gets me right into the action of the West End. 
So to do this, the immediate obstacle that comes up in my brain is how are we gonna navigate Bank Junction? So we can't go through it at this time, we can only go around it. I'm thinking we're gonna go underneath. So we get a left into Grace Church Street, go forward into Cannon Street, um, and then go forward again over into St. Paul's Churchyard. From here, we lead our way into Ludgate Hill, where the traffic builds up once again. While sitting in the traffic lights at Ludgate Circus, I'm quite astounded by how many people are out and about on the streets. And then I have the realization that normally all these people would be underground. And it's like being able to see through the layers of the earth and amazing to see everyone going about their own different ways that they would normally be completing via tube train. Not wanting to navigate the disastrous remodeling of the old witch, I have a little shimmy through Lincoln's Inn Fields. And as we go up the west side, soon realize this isn't much better either, with the traffic from Remnant Street queuing round into the square. Once we get ourselves through a few phases of these traffic lights, we manage to get over into Great Queen Street and we're pretty neatly set up for Covent Garden. Fairly clear at this point, I'm able to set him directly on the corner of Shelton Street and Mercer Street. And not having to venture that much further into the West End, I managed to pick up these gents on Upper St. Martin's Lane who want to go to Paddington Station. This can be a bit of a finickety route and especially if it's quite busy in the West End. But thankfully, for some strange reason at this time, there's not much traffic around, nor is there many pedestrians on the street. We get a left into Shaftesbury Avenue, and Shaftesbury Avenue is actually closed for the whole duration of, but at this point, I know I can get the all-important right into Wardour Street. Wardour Street then very neatly sets us up to get us Knoll Street, which gets us over into Great Marlborough Street, and if we run that all the way out along Grosvenor Street, Grosvenor Square, Upper Grosvenor Street, brings us out onto Park Lane. From here, Marble Arch, Bayswater Road, Hyde Park Street, and we can shuffle around that Tybernia area, getting us onto Sussex Gardens, Norfolk Place, Praed Street. And whilst we're on Praed Street, just look to the right at how many people are trying to get on the buses. It is insane. You know, I really do feel for other transport workers. I feel like if the bus drivers went on strike, everyone would just go on the tube and they would probably be largely unaffected. I don't think anyone would really mind that much. And dropping them off at Praed Street, this is probably my most successful run of the day. I instinctively want to head to Paddington Station because there could be a lot of people who have got a mainline train across London who desperately need some form of transport. So I'm eager to serve those people. But I don't have to go far. I do a right into Eastbourne Terrace and there's a couple of gents who want to head into the St. James's area. Another touch of a job. Now, as I'm doing a U-turn to head back south, I'm actually struggling to get into the left-hand lane, which will bring me back along Praed Street, and I can wiggle out into Bayswater Road that way. I opt for the right, and then I wiggle out onto Bayswater Road via the west. So as we learned on the last run, traffic is pretty light in the west end. So I stick it to the big roads, the oranges and lemons. Bayswater Road has a neat bus lane running along it, as does Park Lane. From here, we just get a left into Piccadilly, run it along. Traffic is a little bit heavy on Pall Mall, but we managed to escape off and go around St. James's Square and Charles II Street. Then it's just a left into Regent Street, St. James's, and they want to be set on Carlton Street. I believe it's Aquavit, the, uh, the Scandinavian type restaurant there. From dropping these gents off, I start heading towards Piccadilly, but can soon see the traffic building in the area. So I escape right onto German Street and pick up this group just on the junction of German Street and Haymarket. They want to go to number one Blackfriars. That's the, the big building at the south of Blackfriars Bridge. It's quite a good job, actually, because it's taken me from one busy area to another busy area. So I'm quite confident from dropping them, I should hopefully be able to pick something else up. It's a difficult decision on how to run this run. I can come down and go over Westminster Bridge, but then it's chasing my tail a bit. And Stamford Street can be a little bit busy to get your left into Blackfriars Road. The other option is to get onto the Victoria Embankment, run it out, and that's pretty direct, but then you have to come back on yourself to get onto Blackfriars Bridge. So the route I opt for is to get ourselves onto the Strand, over the Aldwych, and over into Fleet Street, 
And then from here, I can get a right into Bouverie Street, left into Tudor Street, forward New Bridge Street, forward Blackfriars Bridge, and bosh, I can set them there. Once I drop them, I head back over Blackfriars Bridge and into the city, do a left into Fleet Street, and pick up this couple from the Punch Tavern. They want to go over to Lancaster Gate, another fair old boot, back over into the west, touch. As I pull off on Fleet Street, I'm mentally calculating the route and how I'm going to get myself over there. And I look down at the clock and it's just gone 7 o'clock, meaning that I can use Chancery Lane. Chancery Lane neatly connects Fleet Street up to High Hoban. From here, I can run it all the way through to St Giles High Street and out onto Oxford Street. There's a slight problem though. As I get to St Giles High Street, there's a closure and I've got to very quickly think on my feet whether I do a left or a right here. If I take the right, I have to do a little bit of carving up and U-turns to get myself back onto Oxford Street. Whereas if I take the left, progress down Shaftesbury Avenue and pick it up from Wardour Street, as we did earlier, this is probably just as good in fact. Once we get onto Wardour Street, we do the same left into Knoll, forward into Great Marlborough, and it's pretty much a repeat of that job we did to Paddington earlier. And in some ways, this is probably better than trundling it along Oxford Street, because Oxford Street, you can still get caught in a bit of traffic. There's a lot of pedestrian crossings along there as well. So this is a much quicker way to breeze our way out west into Park Lane, do the same old shimmy around Marble Arch, left into Bayswater Road, and forward out into Lancaster Gate. Bosh, we set them down there. I'm feeling a little bit peckish. Now, to kill two birds with one stone, I decide to try and pull up and find somewhere to charge the cab. I try this one on Lancaster Gate by Spire House, that's currently in use by another driver. Then I try Brook Street just by Hyde Park, and there's another driver on this one too. So I sit there, have a little bit of a munch, and then this driver moves off. So I get to charge my cab for a bit there. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I was a little bit stressful earlier. Go through Hackney, uh, right at rush hour. I really kind of wanted to go home after that. I was prepared to throw my uh, toys out of the pram, just so to speak. Dealing with the bloody traffic. This is kind of why I wanted to make the video, because it, it all seems well and good that, you know, you're a taxi driver, Oh, the tubes go down, you must be raking it in. Yeah, I've had people all day, but the, the issue is, is you can't get anywhere. But yeah, you've got to come out here and do it. It's a lot more draining working like this because you're just constantly thinking about traffic and just, you know, nudging forward and trying to pull out of junctions and things. It's definitely not as relaxing. It's 10 o'clock now, head back in, West End, cut more, one west or north, and I'll be pretty happy, so sweet. Once I'm adequately charged, I actually go on a little bit of a hunt and it takes me a while to get my next job. I go along Bayswater Road, we take Kensington Church Street, Kensington High Street, Queen's Gate, Cromwell Road, Brompton Road, still no job, go past the Mandarin and then I eventually get this gentleman by the French Embassy on Knightsbridge. Now he wants to go up to York Street, Marlebon. Quite a simple run, we just run it up Park Lane, around Marble Arch, and we come in via Great Cumberland Place. From here, we can use Montague Square, which, if you watched last week's video, you'll know was the home of a famous member of the Beatles and a couple of other rock stars. Bit more wiggling through, and we eventually drop the gentleman on Crawford Street, as he says that he'll just walk through onto York Street. From here, I make my way over to the Marleban area. I quite like the Marleban area because it's the perfect mixture of retail, groceries, uh, medical, hospitality, restaurants and pubs, meaning that you can go into this area most times of day and even into the evening and you've got quite a high likelihood of picking someone up. I see this hand go up. The only issue is, is finding an appropriate place to stop. If I stop where I am, I will be blocking the road. And if I stop any further forward, I'll be on the zigzags, which is against the law as I'm blocking the view of the pedestrian crossing. So I do a right into Paddington Street and clear myself of the crossing whilst instructing the passenger to follow me around the corner. The only issue is they don't follow me. So I go back round the block again and hopefully they haven't got another cab in the process. 
I go back round, the hand goes up, and this time, because I'm expecting it, I'm able to pull over somewhere much better that doesn't block the road. They want to go to the Punch Bowl pub in Mayfair. Now, those of you that don't know, the Punch Bowl was quite famous amongst many celebrities as it was purchased in 2008 by Guy Ritchie and Madonna. And for this journey, I get to use one of my new favourite London streets, Gilbert Street. I love this because it drops you so neatly into Mayfair without having to use Orchard Street by the food hall at Selfridges. And from there, I'm straight into Grosvenor Square, left into South Audley Street, left into South Street, Forward Farm Street, and there's the punch bowl just on the left. I make my way into Barclays Square and manage to pick up this couple who want to go out east. They want Tower Gateway Station. And presumably this is to pick up the DLR service as this is one of the only services that was running during this tube strike. This is one of those routes that comes to you quite easily and the trick to it is kind of to work it backwards. So to get to Tower Gateway Station, I need to get to Tower Hill, that's Bywood Street or Lower Thames Street. So this is just a game of how quickly can I get these passengers down to the Victoria Embankment. Simple, right St James's Street, left into Pall Mall, go around Trafalgar Square, comply by King Charles I Island and leave by Northumberland Avenue. Now most of this route is pretty good but we do get stuck in a little bit of traffic on Northumberland Avenue and then thankfully getting out onto the Victoria Embankment traffic is really light and we progress out towards the east at our usual kind of pace and speed. Whole journey takes about 20-25 minutes. As I'm dropping them at Tower Gateway by the Minories pub, I can see two ladies on the opposite side of the street. So once I've dropped them, I pull over and see where they would like to go. And these two ladies wanna to go to Grays in Essex. Now at this point, it's just gone past 11 p.m. and it's probably gonna take me up to 40 minutes to take them out to Grays and drop them out there. I generally have a rule where I want to kind of be at home and likely in bed for around midnight because what happens is if I stay out late, I get quite tired, it's not good to drive tired and also it screws up my next day. If I've got a busy day or if I want to come out in the cab, it's not a sustainable way to work. So by the time I've gone out there, dropped, it's going to be nearer midnight. And then from there, I've got to get all the way out towards West because I'm in West London. So I have to politely decline them. I head back into the city, hoping to find some kind of a job that will pull me West. And as I get towards the end of Oldgate, I find these couple of gents who want to go over to London Bridge. It's not bad. It pulls me kind of West and it's quite quick to knock this out. They just want to be set on Tooley Street. So it's straight over London Bridge. Turn left into Duke Street Hill, forward Tooley Street, and I set them safely on the north side of Tooley Street. I have a hunt around in the Southwark area, and it's not until I get over Waterloo Bridge where I get these two gents who want to go to the Park Plaza Albert Embankment. If I go back over Waterloo Bridge and come along York Road and set Albert Embankment that way. If I go along the Strand, I might hit more traffic where there's other vehicles picking up people who've had a night out in the West End. I've then also got to go down Whitehall, go through Parliament Square before I can get myself down to Lambeth Bridge. Both would have worked, but I feel like the direction I've come, I've already had a good indication of what the traffic is like in the area. So very quickly, buzz them over to the Park Plaza Albert Embankment. It's at this point where I realised that I faffed around in town for two short-ish jobs when I could have had that longer job out towards Lakeside and I probably would have nearly finished that job by now. So it probably would have taken me the same amount of time and I probably would have had more money in my pocket. Fully accepting the fact that I might not get another job on my way home, I head west on Victoria Street and almost out of nowhere this gentleman hails me down and wants to go to Summers Town. It's a fair old boot from Victoria but at this time of night we can just stick it on the big roads and we soon cruise our way up there. Park Lane. Gloucester Place. Get the right onto Marlborough Road. Bang it all the way into Euston Road. And on the way, I asked the gent whereabouts in Somers Town he wants to be set. 
It's one of those weird areas in London where you can kind of only access it from certain points. And as he's at the north of Summers Town, he wants me to go up and then come back down. And even this is a little bit tricky. So we go up Hampstead Road, go past Mornington Crescent Station, Camden High Street, right into Plender Street, right Camden Street, left Crowndale Road, and I set the gentleman there. So as you see from this video, just because there's a tube strike on doesn't mean that we cabbies are busy and there's loads of people getting in our cabs. We can only have one passenger in at a time and it all depends on the luck of the draw of where those passengers might be going and also add into the fact that we have a lot more traffic to navigate. So it's not as lucrative in some ways because we can't get across London as quick as we would do normally. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my email newsletter. The link is in the description down below. I send a weekly update of what I'm up to on this channel, behind the scenes, and you get first access before anyone else. If you wanna watch more of my content, I'd highly recommend checking out some of these videos where I break down some of the myths about driving a taxi. See you again soon, bye-bye.